Set up your wiring like this to confirm the correct operation of the analog outputs and analog inputs using any of the three methods shown. Method 1 uses the function generator on analog output 0. We'll begin by starting the function generator and also getting the oscilloscope going. We can use the defaults on the function generator. And there we see the sinusoidal signal observed by the oscilloscope. You can try some different wave shapes here. Again, confirming that we can generate different patterns on the analog output number zero and observe those on analog input zero. One thing we would like to be able to check is that we can get our full range of analog output and analog input. With this we have a maximum value of right around 10 volts. So that peak value of the sinusoid is at plus 10 volts. We see that with this setting of 5 volts per division times 2 divisions, that tells us that we're at plus 10 volts. And that's the maximum value that you can get for the analog outputs and inputs. Dial down the DC offset, and now the bottom of the sinusoid is sitting at minus 10 volts. Now the function generator can only produce a signal on analog output 0. We can use the arbitrary waveform generator to make a pair of waveforms and simultaneously check both analog outputs and analog inputs. Set your sample rate and units to 50 kilohertz. Let's use sine for the analog output zero. And I'll save this waveform data file on the desktop. Make a minor modification. Uh, looking over the list of possible signals there, let's go ahead with stair step. And I'll save this away in a different file. And that's what I'll generate on analog output number one. Again, keep track of those values right there. You have to enter those manually in the arbitrary waveform generator. Go ahead and load the files where I'd saved them on the desktop. Enable both channels and run the arbitrary waveform generator. So now we're producing those pair of waveforms on the two analog outputs. Get the oscilloscope started. There we see the sinusoid coming in on channel zero. Let me trigger on channel zero and stabilize the display. I'll enable the second channel and select analog input number one. And that's in blue. And sure enough, there we see that stair step pattern that we had specified. Looks like everything is working for both sets of channels. Method three involves a LabVIEW VI called set AO voltage and show AI voltage. You can operate these sliders to give any particular DC value. And then I'm setting that voltage. And then since they're wired directly to the analog input channels, we expect the analog inputs to simply come along for the ride. So confirm that we can get the full range going from minus 10 to plus 10 volts on both channels. Everything looks great.